What's up, Flipper Flopper Flatteners? I'm Quackers Co., and this is the fish fry for November 10th, being held at the spawning grounds. Our cookware composition is the Splattershot Jr., the Sloshing Machine, the Range Blaster, and the Goo Tuber. Spawning grounds is all about power and knowing how to get to where you need to to deliver that damage. This composition has a lot of damage that it can deal, but some of these weapons will have a little bit more technique to them than meets the eye. Something that will be really important in this rotation will be Quahawk Control. Since we have three heavy hitters in this rotation, it'll be helpful to put some kind of damage onto those Quahawks, that way the Range Blaster and the Splatter Shot can take them out pretty quickly. And if that damage isn't being dealt to those Quahawks, we're going to have to figure out ways around them, or other ways of trying to keep a better control on this map. And the fire rate on this composition is kind of slow, so putting your back to the shoreline will probably be a bad idea. Make sure you get yourself back up, and try to see what your co-workers are up to. Shoreline support is definitely needed on this map, so if you want to go down there and provide support, make sure you're aware of what the quota is, and how much time is left. You might be better needed by the basket. And slam on this can be a fantastic tool to use on boss control, but if you ever want to use them, you have to make sure that you activate them as many times as possible. Any time that you linger in between activating them, we'll send a flood of lessers right there by you. For this composition on a Glowflies wave, that Splattershot Jr. has just a small enough amount of DPS that we need to make sure that we support both on taking out lessers and providing damage onto that Goldie. That Splattershot Jr. is going to have problems holding that line. Spawning grounds can always be a fight, so definitely feel accomplished if you get yourselves a clear. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Splattershot Jr. The Splattershot Jr. has the best coverage on the turf, so make sure you do your part on covering the turf and the walls. The Jr. and the Range Blaster should be on fish stick control. And like I said before, this weapon's DPS and its range is just short enough that you might find yourself getting a little bit too close to things, so try to make sure you have an exit. Our second cooking utensil is the sloshing machine. The sloshing machine and the range blaster can handle mid walls very well on painting. The sloshing machine also has splash damage with its attack, so it's always helpful to have a little bit of extra range or to jump whenever you're attacking. Try to stay aware of your movement and where you're trying to lead the salmonids to. It'll be easy to get a bunch of lessers together, that way you can cause a bit better damage. And if you keep yourself going up to higher ground, it'll be a little bit easier to see what your coworkers are getting into and what you can assist them on. Our third cooking utensil is the Range Blaster. The Range Blaster has a very moderate ink usage, so as long as you're swimming and jumping in between each shot, you'll find it easier to keep yourself topped off. This weapon's blast is huge, so as long as you're able to bounce in between causing damage to lessers and putting damage onto bosses, it'll be a super great support tool. Just make sure after you fire a few shots, you should paint your way to a better vantage point because there might be something sneaking up behind you. The Range Blaster is also really good for taking out stingers. Just keep in mind if you're getting all the way down there to the shoreline, this weapon does not have the fire rate to be super aggressive, so you might find yourself activating a special. Our last cooking utensil is the Goo Tuber. The Goo Tuber does have a piercing shot, but its range is pretty short for spawning grounds. Because of the other weapons of this composition, 
Now, short range of the goo tuber will have us moving in between the platforms just a little bit more so that we can actually hit our targets. But if we're getting down into the mess of it, we're going to find ourselves getting a little bit co covered in the enemy ink. Uh. Uh. So make sure that you stay focused on getting yourself to those vantage points. This weapon should be played the most defensively out of any other weapon in this composition. During an extra wave, even though the Spluttershot Jr. has a lower DPS than the sploosh it might be helpful for that player to aggro the Kohozuna and take out lessers while keeping him right there in the center of the map. That way your other heavy hitters can go take out bosses, spawning those golden eggs. And then whenever you get a chance, break away from the Kohozuna, Swim to get some ink, get you one of those eggs, and keep causing that damage. And the fish fry usually comes up before the stage rotation. So if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye